Okay, we'll get started back, and at this time, I will turn the meeting over to Fisheries Management Committee Chairman Jeff McMillan. Thank you, Chairman Griggs. At this time, I'll ask Chief Wilson to uh, review us on our uh, uh, Fisheries Division uh, for um, commercial fishing. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McMillan, Commissioners. Um, we actually have two proclamations that were presented and, and, uh, and discussed yesterday. The, the first one is a proclamation 1416, which deals with the commercial mussels. And basically, we just added the bank climber mussel to the list of species to be available for harvest, and they have to be two and five eighths inches uh, to, to be harvested. That's it. So I'm going to make it. Uh, Commissioner Griggs, the Fisheries Management Committee, and I have recommended the passage of um, <coughs> Proclamation 14-16 uh, for the uh, taking of possession and selling of muzzles. Okay. Second. 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 Is there any discussion on the commission? Any discussion in the audience? Okay. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Proclamation 1416, Commercial Taking, Possession, and Selling Muscles passes. All right, Mr. Chairman. Do you want me to continue? Okay, the, and then next is Proclamation 1415, which is a commercial taking of fish and turtles. Uh, basically, this is the, are the things that, that we recommended or approval to, to uh, close the waters on the John Tully Wildlife Management to turtle harvest. It's still open to all other forms of commercial fishing where it is open, but it's just for the turtles. We included the reservoirs open to commercial harvest in the, the 5 a.m. to 1 hour after sunset restriction during April, May that's currently in effect on Kentucky <coughs> Reservoir. Just applied it to all the reservoirs that are open to commercial harvest. It also further defines uh, the, the uh, creeks that they're able to fish in during those restrictions. Further define the, the hooks that are legal for trot lines. Just said single hook, we said single, double, treble, and the restrict and the regulation. And then the paddlefish part of it, uh, recommended to limit the number of permits to 55 resident, five non-residents, and through attrition, resident permits will be reduced to 40. And the cutoff date for the purchase will be March 15th each year. Limit the number of nets to 12. That includes, if you tie them from end to end, as long as it doesn't exceed the 300 yards, that's considered net set. Lim length limit increased to 38 inches except for the Mississippi River. No blocking of paddlefish allowed. And that's, those were the, those are the recommend recommendations we had. Now the uh, amendments that were made yesterday, I'll read those. Uh, all nets must be marked with an eight by eight, eight inch or eight inch or larger. It cannot be gray or black in color. The season shall be November 21st to April 7th, except for the Mississippi River. And six inch gill nets are greater only, uh, except for the Mississippi River during the paddlefish season, which uh, November 21 to April 7. And the onboard processing or screening uh, will be allowed, which is the current, the language is in the current proclamation now. I think that's it. I believe that's it. I believe that's it. Okay. Uh, do you want me to go, pursue, go forward with the, uh, amending the amendment then? I don't, know if, I don't know what the proper procedure is. I think that we have to vote on this, and then we have to amend the amendment, correct? Is there any other amendments to What that? about the 38-inch size limit? That's it, on there. It is on there. Okay. It was on the that was, that was on the original. A, These okay. are just the amendments, but right. we're going to have to amend the amendments, so the proper procedure would be to vote on this amendment. I think you just have a second amendment for whatever you want. Cheryl, so I need to amend the amendment first before we vote on everything? Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Well. Do, do we go further with that then? Or? Let's go ahead and go with that now. Okay. Um, yesterday, uh, when Ricky Scott presented the concerns by the Commercial Fishing Advisory Committee, he expressed concern about not being able to set their nets uh, at noon the day before. and uh, we, we're not able just to allow them just to set the nets without declaring the season to be open because they can't just set them and, and not, you know, not just leave them there. So we, uh, understanding the need for, would be safety for the commercial fishermen and for the law enforcement folks because they would have to set them at midnight if it was open on the 21st 
and therefore might be a safety factor. So we recommend to amend the season to November 20th at noon through April the 7th. And also this would apply to the gill net, six inch gill net restriction, which would also be uh, only allowed during that same time period of November 20th at noon uh, to April the 7th. Okay. So do we discuss it or do we go ahead and do it now? Man? Okay, well I'd like to uh, propose uh, an amendment to amend the amendment um, and, the, and the, the uh, motion would be to amend the paddlefish season except for the Mississippi River to be from 12 noon on November 20th through April 7th. Thus restricting the use also of the six inch or larger gill nets to the same period except for the Mississippi River 12 p.m. November 20th to April 7th. Do I have a second? Okay, all right, I've got a motion and second. What we're voting on right now is just the further of this amendment. That's all we're voting on is what's on the screen at this time. Is there any discussion on commission? Is there any in the audience? Come to the mic, state your name, sir. Just asking for clarification, Mike Kelly, interested in paddlefish and the gill netting. I would request that you go back to the uh, paragraph about the uh, reservoirs, the 5 a.m. to whatever. I want to make sure about this because you're voting all in this. No, all, you're all not we're voting, voting all on in the block. Right, Bobby, go back to the further. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Hold on a second. Come back. I, all we're voting, voting on right now is just that further part. Hank, well, we're going to come that's back. That's just up so you can other. set your nets the day before yeah, at noon. Wasn't, that wasn't the part I was interested in. Right. I'm interested. Are you going? Well, let's amend that together? first. We'll come back. Okay. We'll come back to that. Is there any more discussion from the audience? Okay. Make it clear we're voting on the further part. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Back to you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Griggs, the Fisheries Management Committee, and I recommend passing Proclamation 14-Fishing, commercial taking of fish and turtles, as amended. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. And what we're voting on now is the uh, proclamation 1415 as amended. It's the whole thing. Mr. Kelly, you can speak now, sir. Thank you. The part about uh, right here, uh, this has been in place for the creeks on Kentucky Lake. And I may be confused. I'm asking for clarification. Are you adding this to the whole state? Yes, so the waters that are open to commercial fishing. So you're talking about the whole Kentucky Lake Reservoir will now have to be out there on those hours? No, no, this was already in place on Kentucky Lake. Just Kentucky the Reservoir. creeks? Well, no, this, the whole this, reservoir? This regulation is, it is exactly the same um, existing right now. It's in the reservoir. Except, but, except it says only to Kentucky Reservoir. Right. So it's now we're adding all the reservoirs uh, across the state that are open to commercial fishing for the same. And we also put in there um, all creeks entering reservoirs. In, in the past, it said all creeks. So we clarified that to say all creeks entering reservoirs. Okay. So we're just talking about the creeks. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah during that time period, and it's for the crappie fishermen and the interaction between the crappie fishermen and the, and the commercial fishermen. I won't, I won't speak for all of the guys. I'll just assume for them today. I will assume that they have no idea this is statewide. It's never been that way. No, we brought it up at the, at the at July let commercial speak fishing part. horizon committee. Come front. You would state your name. Ricky Scott, commercial fisherman, uh, advisory committee. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still lost too about uh, uh, this This applies to every reservoir. That's open to commercial fishing, yes. It, I wasn't it's supposed, it, uh, you can still use slap baskets, turtle traps, and trot lines, mm -hmm. but you can't use the other commercial fishing gear like gill nets from 5 a.m. to one hour after sunset during the months of April and May in the creeks. All right, gill nets. Okay. Right, now that, 
the creeks, not the embayment, you know, the big embayment part, that's still allowed, but just the specific small creeks that enter the reservoir, that's what we're talking about. It's, the right. way it was set up, it was illegal to even go back up into the creeks to use that other gear there. And okay. we're, we're, we're clarifying that to make that legal, but we added the 5 a.m. to 1 p.m., I mean, one hour after sunset regulation there because it's a similar language as Kentucky. But, but this uh, is what we brought this. Be, instead of just being Kentucky laid, it's, it's yeah. going to be statewide. Right. I don't really, I, the fishermen didn't realize that. And well, we, well yeah. I, we brought it up at the advisory committee in, uh, in, in, uh, in July, and Eric explained that. Okay. Bob, this is a conflict between user groups, or is it a spawning problem, or why, what's the, the reason? The original recommendation for Kentucky Reservoir was for the conflict between user groups, particularly the crappie fishermen and fishermen that, that fish up in those embayments, especially during the, the prime fishing season of April and May, so there wouldn't be any, they wouldn't be running across gill nets when they're trying to go crappie fishing and that kind of thing. So this restricts the use of those during that, those time periods except for slap baskets turtle traps and trot lines okay. one more question what is the reason for this uh, is there a problem is there a problem or something or is it just something that i think I the original reason was at the request of uh, some people who fished for with turtle for turtles and they the the, the language didn't really specify um, that they could fish in creeks. Okay. And so now we're clear, clarifying that. And we, added not, the, we added could, the language of the 5 a.m. Huh? Excuse me. Could you not add it, uh, you could, uh, that you could fish the creeks and them not be closed during that time? It's, I mean, it's always been what it is. Uh, the fishermen, it's never been closed in, other, in the other reservoirs, so the fishermen's always fish those with gill nets in April and May. And uh, I understand that they wanted wording, but they did, but uh, the turtle fishermen wanted wording. I understand that, but why why do close it to gill nets when it's never been closed before? It's probably for the same reason it did on Kentucky Reservoir, to, okay, to I didn't, reduce the conflicts between sport fishermen and, uh, and commercial fishermen. Okay, all right, I understand. Mr. Chairman, yes, Bobby, point of clarification. This has been available since July, is that correct? This language? Yes. It was presented to the, the user group. The commercial it, fishing There's not been any changes to no. this since July. It's been no, that's out the same, there and right. available for everyone to see and comment on. This, right, same language we had in July. This Thank is you, what Bobby. You see here. Appreciate it. Any more questions on the commission? This isn't affecting the, the, the rest of the reservoir. It's just, just where the creek rolls in, so. And creeks during that time period of April and May and from basically daylight is what we're trying to reduce the conflict. So they could go out in front of the creek mouth or whatever yeah. and put their net. Still plenty of places. Okay. Mr. Kelly. This was my understanding of it. Uh, my understanding of it, the turtle man wanted a clarification of how far back in there he could go. He's going, he's going back in places where he can't even get to with a boat, way back in there. He was wanting clarification of where his boundaries were. And the, the time factor is the big issue to the to the guys. Uh, I think that's what started this. The turtle man wanted to know, you know, can I go 10 miles back in there where it's this wide and I'm walking? Any more discussion before we vote? All right, I'll make clear what we're voting on. It's Proclamation 1415, commercial taking of fish and turtles. And we're voting on the further minute was voted on today, and also does it? You want to speak? Come on back up. It's on a different thing. Is that all right? As long Is as it, it's on this. I, if y'all were going to vote, I, I yeah. wanted to get something else clarified. Okay. On the 12 nets, uh, 
I, under, we understand that it's 12 nets tied together. In other words, if you had two 50-yard nets, you could tie them together as a net, one net. But as they was uh, writing up the amendment this morning, we had a disagreement between me and Eric. Eric said that if you tie two together, that is considered, he could, he considers that as two nets. So uh, me and Eric had a disagreement there. And so I wanted, to, I don't want, you know, y'all to pass this and then uh, when the season opens, somebody get a ticket for tying two nets together because they thought it was legal. That's the only thing. I want, it needs to be clarified some way or another. Bobby, Bobby did. It's, it's, go, it's, it's, speak. go ahead. I want to ask Officer Freddie Kett. My understanding was that it sets, but there are some there are some fishermen that do tie nets end to end, and as long as it doesn't go over the the 300 yards, so that's the way that's the way it's supposed to be. All right. I, I will double check the the language that's that present, being presented today. Make sure it's, it's doesn't well, say doesn't say anything different. If it, if it said net sets, then there wouldn't be any question, would they? Instead of just 12 nets. That's what we was we okay. thought was going to be changed yesterday. You know, we wanted to be sure that there's not a problem. You know, because uh, me and Eric had a, had a disagreement on it. So they may be uh, an officer and a fisherman is probably going to have somewhere down the road. It might not be this year, but you know, I don't I don't want it to be a problem. You know, when we really trying to do the right thing. Bobby, any more comment to that? No, I'll check. I'll double check it. Okay. I agree with what he's saying. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for, for your time. Uh, you all have been patient with me, and, I, and I'm sorry I took so much time yesterday but, uh, and today, but uh, I just don't want you know, any problems on something like that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, why don't we just add net sets to it and clarify it? I mean, that'd be the easy thing to do, wouldn't it? Well, Bobby, wouldn't that be just, or is that you not yeah, comfortable with that? It doesn't define that. It doesn't say. It just says net in a proclamation. So you could, mm -hmm. you could say that. I guess or we could just. Well, it says 300 yards. Well, net says. Correct. I'll it's, take that in the form of a motion. So, if you want me to, I'll read the way it says, and then we. It's, says the maximum length of a gill net is 300 yards. You could say the maximum length of a gill net set is 300 yards. Again, I'll take that in the form of a motion. Mr. Chairman. Go get a motion going out. I'd like to make a motion that we amend the language to say net sets of not over 300 yards. All right, I have a motion and second. We're ready for discussion. Mr. Ripley. Thank you. Are we saying net sets not to exceed 300 yards total yes per set right okay well is it my concern is that we could have 12 sets or 12 uh, nets each 300 yards in length and that's not the intent is it yeah oh it is could be as long as it doesn't nothing exceeds okay. over 300 yards. Okay. I just want to be clear. Thank you. Any more discussion on the commission? Do I have any discussion from the audience? All right. Now what we're voting on now is another amendment. <laughs> so all those in favor of this amendment, give me an aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. This amendment passes. Now we're back to the original motion. Proclamation 1415, commercial taking a fish and turtle with all the amendments together. And do I have, uh, I'm going to ask for another motion on that again. So moved. I got a motion, I have a second. Any discussion on the commission? The audience, no questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Proclamation 1415, commercial taking of fish and turtles with all the amendments passes. All right. Uh, okay. Comment from Mr. Cannon. Now that we voted, I'm going to. I'm not trying to have a last word, please. Let me assure you this. We had some good discussion yesterday, and there was meat behind that discussion. 
And I just want to offer three challenges that we've got to be successful on. Uh, Chief Ryder, your folks, it sounded like that there are ways to test for the mixing of eggs that needs to be explored further. I want you all to do whatever you need to do to set up the protocols and otherwise. I want you to be successful. I think the commercial fishing industry wants you to be successful in convicting those folks who miss it, mix eggs, basically illegally harvesting fish or roe in any form or fashion. And so I would ask you and your folks to please pursue that. And if there's things that we need to do as a commission, tell us what we need to do. Cheryl, Chris, Commissioner Watson did a great job at up in the ante yesterday saying that we would like the penalty to be the revocation of a license for up to seven years. We all know what the intent is, and that is if somebody is going to knowingly, illegally harvest fish or the roe from fish, we don't want them in business. We don't want them working with people who are in business. We want them off the radar for right now, particularly given the maturity rate that the paddlefish have. Whatever we need to do as a commission, whether it's another proclamation, whether it's rulemaking or otherwise, I would respectfully challenge and request that be brought to us at the next commission meeting, if at all possible. Okay. The last challenge, commercial fishing community. Uh, hopefully in your eyes, there's been one heck of a turn made relationally. We've listened. There were amendments to amendments to amendments ad nauseum almost. But we're listening. Even as recently as a few minutes ago, and I will tell you some of this stuff should have come up months ago. Because at the August meeting, some of these things you brought up yesterday and even this morning did not. And I would have expected them then. But I respect it. The attention was directed in other areas. We need your support. If Chris has to go to the Hill and make legislative changes, we need your support. Most importantly, at the local level, at the judicial level, many of these judges are your friends. You eat lunch with them, you go to church with them, go to baseball, whatever that is. They need to hear from you and not just us that you want to see this implemented. If we say it, we're law enforcement, that's what we're perceived as in the judicial community, and we don't mind that. But having it come from the business community, them hearing that makes a difference. We need your support. If people are breaking this law, we need to know who they are because it's giving you one heck of a black eye, and I'm ready for that eye to heal on your behalf. If we don't have success in these areas, this time next year you may not like us very much because we will have no choice but to rescind what we've done today. I don't say that as a threat. I say that because we have an obligation to protect the resource, and the resource is iffy right now. That technical term, iffy. But it is in jeopardy, and we've taken steps to hopefully protect it that much longer. But if these things don't happen together, if we're not playing team ball, we will have no choice but to tighten further down on the regulations to protect the resource, which is indeed protecting your business. But my hope is that we can do it without making tougher regulations. So that's my challenge to the three groups. That's the end of my sermon today. All right. Commissioner McMillan. I just want to <clears throat> say that I'm uh, proud of this commission. Um, when I came on the commission five years ago, I heard a lot of things about what had gone on with commercial fishing and all. And I think that we've, we've, we've made progress this year in that we, we're, we're finally getting to where the agency wanted us to be in the Patoli report and the, what it showed us that um, we need to start taking measures. And I think we've done that this year with with listening to the, the fishermen themselves. And I applaud what uh, Commissioner Cannon said. And, and I think that, uh, you know, I do challenge y'all to listen. I mean, y'all basically in the conversation we had yesterday, we had several commercial fishermen that made the comment they knew things were going on that 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 we have not been able to be proved. So I'm looking forward to hoping we can get the, uh, the prototype for the test so that we do have the ability to uh, keep things honest. And then in the long run, that's going to be beneficial to y'all. So thank you for the commission and thank you for our fisheries committee. And thank you for the agency and, and all the hard work that Bobby uh, and his staff has put in. Commissioner Cox. I'm changing the subject. Uh, Chief Wilson, you're still here. 
I, without objection, I'd like to request Bobby and his and his staff to, irrespective of of genetics and the concerns about that, I'd like to know if we stocked F1 bass or Florida bass or tiger bass, whatever you call them, in all of our lakes in Tennessee, what hatchery challenges and what dollar challenges or a plan would be to do that. We can discuss the genetics and the concerns of the staff, but but we've discussed this and I think the opportunity is, is obvious to me with the success at Gunnersville and, Ch and Chickamauga, what the potential is for our fisheries and to sell licenses and popularity of bass fishing. So I'd like to request that you work on what if you were completely satisfied that everything was going to be fine and you wanted to do this program, what are your challenges to get that done? An aggressive stocking program in Tennessee. Please. And I don't know what anybody else thinks about it, but that's that would be my request. You don't have to start today, though, Bob. <laughs> yeah. You can wait till in the morning. After lunch. <laughs> All right, we're still on fisheries. Anybody else have any comments? All right. Just going to Mr. say Trout. one thing. I appreciate Ricky and Mike and you guys for educating us on what you do and how you do it. And I've been uh, invited to go uh, for a day to see just how this stuff works. And I think knowledge is power. And I took them up on the invitation. I want to go see this stuff because <clears throat> it's, uh, I, it's tough for me sometimes to understand just what they do and what they're going through and, saw, and with Bobby and so forth and all these issues and stuff and I want to be as educated as I can so uh, I, I know they just said this too but anybody who wants to do that to sort of learn more about this as this process goes through the years uh, I'm up for for learning more about these kind of things because I think it'll help it'll help us with decisions and also with the education of what you guys do and certainly you get to know a little bit more of, of how we do it. You know, I know Mike knows the process, and he's been coming here a lot longer than I've been here. But uh, I just think it's a, it's a thought and a good idea for the commission <clears throat> to, from time to time, or if you can, and I, hopefully I can, is, is to, to understand what these guys do and how they do it. And then we can make more educated uh, decisions and, and not be uh, confused. That's it. Any other commissioners? All right, Mr. Baker. Um, Bobby, when you look at that F1 uh, deal like Bill's talking about for the state, what do you think that would, what a projected cost was? Can you bring back to us as commissioners a breakdown of our warm water uh, species cost of what we're spending as agency on our, you know, on all our warm water species and, and our cold water species too? Just so, just so we kind of got a species per item to know, so we, so we as a commission know what our costs are. Thank you. All right, no one else on the committee. Anybody in the audience before I close the fishery committee, you'd like to make a comment? Okay, at this time, uh, I will go to budget committee chairman, Harold Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is going to be a condensed version of the Budget Committee presentation. Uh, we were unable to meet yesterday due to time constraints. Uh, commissioners, you had information on the various budget expansions in your packet. Uh, we'll have some uh, presentations on those, brief presentations. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize Tim Churchill, who's the Chief of Real Estate Division, to give us the real estate report. This would have been done yesterday, but uh, Tim, if you could to then stay up after your report because I believe you have a, uh, a proclamation that needs or an expansion that needs attention. Thank you, Commissioner Cannon. Commissioners, uh, we have, I'll start off with this real estate report. Oh, there it is, there it is right there. Okay. Starting in the western part of the state, we have uh, several transactions out there. I hope you can see that. You might want to bring the lights down a, minute, a little bit if you could. Um, we've got most of the transactions as usual on this, this side of the state are, are wetland fund transactions. Um, there's 
quite a few smaller ones at, at various uh, uh, WMAs across across Region One. Um, most of them are pretty small tracks, and uh, most of them are kind of stacked up right now down at Department of General Services. We're having a it's, we're having a bit of delay on getting some closings done that we thought should have been done a while ago. Um, the biggest one is the one furthest to the west, uh, the Hartwood uh, Forest Land piece, which is uh, at uh, Tumbleweed WMA. That we hope in the next few months will close, and that's uh, 2,800 acres. And we we've uh, submitted a, a wetland grant as well, a NACA grant, to uh, get a million dollars towards the purchase of that particular tract. Anybody have any questions about? Anything going on, on there? Any of these tracks? I'll just keep going if we. In Region Two, there's there's uh, quite a bit. There's not a whole lot going on at this point. We've closed several tracks in the last couple of months. Uh, the Strickland tract at Bar Camp Barrens WMA, uh, over towards the eastern boundary of the region, uh, we closed that this week. I think on Monday or Tuesday. The Collier tract over in uh, in Hickman County will should close within the next few weeks I think and it's it's the one that's additive to the uh, Department of Corrections track that we got that was about 1500 acres so uh, that'll be a real nice new uh, WMA area in region 3 we've got I can't even see the one on the top but um, there's there's several uh, tracks here they're a little larger. Uh, we did close Skinner Mountain, which is 4,000 acres. Uh, we're, we're very close to closing the Branton Tract in Jackson County, uh, which is 272 acres. We've, we've got another tract that we've already bought up there. Um, this Cunningham Tract, which, which is a, a wetland fund tract, that, that is gonna be a, uh, uh, we're, we're still waiting on that. We've, we've had some difficulty uh, with the the landowners tax liabilities they've had a difficult time selling uh, we recently got a, a a fish and wildlife service grant for eight hundred thousand towards the purchase of this tract that we're uh, very ex excited about and uh to region four got only got a couple of things going on over there and they're ongoing uh topoco lands right around uh, chill highway calderwood reservoir around the park uh, we're still working on getting that transferred from uh, the Nature Conservancy, that's about 3,600 acres. And then there's a few acres of wetland up, at, uh, up in uh, Car no, Johnson County that we're, we're still trying to get closed. And I think that'll happen within the next couple of weeks as well. And that's all I have. Is there any, any questions on any of these tracks? I think I'll put more information in your book, so. Tim, thank you. Are there any questions from the commission? regarding the real estate report. Any questions from the public? <coughs> if not, Tim, I'll ask you to speak to the three budget expansion items that you have uh, regarding three tracks, and I'm just, I'll am just i make a motion after your presentation to hear uh, the three in aggregate. Okay. Um, we've got three tracks up here that we're uh, wanting to pursue. Uh, we're requesting a budget expansion uh, for each of these. They are all uh, being part, purchased in partnership with the Land Trust for Tennessee. Uh, they are, will be selling to us and making the match with their bargain sale. So what we're asking for here is 100% federal uh, PR money. And the first of these is the Chalupsky Tract. It's at uh, Prentice Cooper WMA. Uh, the WMA actually covers not just the green that you can see on the map, but the, the whole of the state forest as well. Um, this is a pretty good size track. This is uh, 529 acres. Uh, gives us great access to Highway 27 above it. And the ask is for 700,000 in PR funds. This is in Marion County. Oops. And the second tract is in Jackson County. It is uh, right up next to these Branton tracks that I mentioned a minute ago. Um, this will 
make this new, this is called the Sherwood Forest Track. It's 141 acres. It would be additive to these Branton tracks, and I bring that, uh, what will be, I guess, uh, it's called Blackburn Fork WMA. It'll bring it up to fi about 500 acres of uh, hunting land. Oops, I didn't, and then that, the federal funds request for this one's 155,000. The last one is this uh, Lynn track. It's 135 acres. It's also in Jackson County, a little further to the north. This is at the Boyles WMA, which Mark Thurman uh, spoke about yesterday in his uh, school's presentation. And this would, uh, this is 100, 135 acres. It's close to doubling the size of that WMA. And the, the ask here is for $252,500 in federal funds. That's it. Mr. Chairman, in consideration of the presentation, I recommend uh, approval of the budget expansion totaling $1,107,500 uh, for acquisition of the three tracks. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. second. Any discussion on the commission? Any from the audience? Okay, those, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Motion for expansion for Chalupsky, Lynn, and Sherwood tracks uh, passes. Next to Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I make a suggestion uh, while we're on real estate? While I'm vaguely familiar with the scoring system, we talk about this property and the <coughs> dots on the map that are, the ones that are connected look obvious, but I might suggest at some point in a, at one of our future meetings when there's not a lot on the agenda that, that our, uh, objectives with these land purchases and how it's credit how it's scored and 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 why we might get 40 acres that appears to be out in the middle of nowhere how do we select these pieces of property and and why it's important to buy them and while I support buying land I just it, it might be helpful to that's just a suggestion to not a request Commissioner Cox is a great point Tim the future let's see if we can add that we've, we've done a good job of letting folks our commission know where the funds are coming from um, and I think that's a very fair point let's take it again to the next level as far as anticipated use and how it was selected okay thanks for your presentation Tim Appreciate thank you it. mr. chairman uh, committee recognizes Darrell Radijak chief of the wildlife division regarding two grants uh, that will require budget expansions. Thank you, Chairman Cannon. The Wildlife Division comes before the Commission today to request a budget expansion, uh, two, two different expansion requests. The, the first one is a $38,000 grant that we received from the Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, we've been receiving this grant for a number of years now. Brent Miller, who has since retired, applied for this. And uh, this $38,000, there's no match required. It's, it's just a grant for our agency to purchase tree seedlings, which will then be planted in West Tennessee for our bottomland hardwood restoration, in, in our bottom, bottomland hardwood restoration areas. The, the second one is what's called a NIFWIF grant, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant. Again, um, our retired forester, Brant Miller, applied for this uh, last year. And what we did is we partnered with a couple of different organizations with, with TDEC and Forestry, and we applied for this grant to do uh, treatments in our eastern hemlock stands, which are being impacted by the woolly adelgid. So this $75,000 grant that we're awarded comes with a one-to-one -one match. <coughs> so we, we have to match $75,000 of that. The good news on that point is that TDEC has already committed $80,000 of their own money to combat woolly adelgid and they are willing to apply that as the match. So there will be no match required from our agency. <coughs> Darrell, thank you. Um, because this didn't go through the committee, I'll be making a recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Griggs, I recommend approval of the proposed budget to expansion incorporating the Arbor Day grant for $38,000 and the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant for $75,000. Okay, you're doing that in the form of a motion? Yes, sir. All right, I have a second. Any discussion from the commission? Anyone from the audience? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
All right, budget expansion for Arbor Day grant, 38,000. National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant, 75,000 passes. Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the committee recognizes Darren Ryder, Chief of uh, Boating and Law Enforcement, regarding a Clean Vessel Act grant that will also require budget expansion. Thank, thank you, Chairman Cannon. Uh, the Boating and Law Enforcement Division requests to expand the division's budget by $468,800 and it's for the Clean Vessel Act program, which is a federally funded program. These are all federal dollars no, at no state dollars, and the uh, recipient that gets awarded the grant is required for the 25%, excuse me, <laughs> sunglasses. And so it's, it's all federal flow through dollars, no state dollars. The recipient provides the 25%. These funds are used for construction, renovation, and maintenance of pump out facilities at the marinas. Thank you, Chief Ryder. I, I like these kind of expansions we've had so far. This is fun. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Griggs, uh, I make motion for passage of a proposed budget expansion to incorporate a Clean Vessel Act uh, grant in the amount of $468,800. Okay, we have a second. <coughs> All right, we have a motion second. Any discussion on the commission? In the audience? All right, being none, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? A motion for budget expansion, Clean Vessel Act grant, $468,800. Passes, Mr. Cannon. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee recognizes Bill Reeves, Chief of Biodiversity, regarding an Endangered Species Act, uh, Section 6. I'm not sure if it's a grant or what. But it, it looks yes, like it is a grant. I'm not Bill Reeves. He's out of town. He asked me to uh, do his presentation here. Um, this is, this is a federal grant, it's pretty routine stuff because we get this every year. This is uh, money we get under Section 6 of the Endangered Species Act. Um, basically, it's our Endangered Species Projects money. And I don't know if you can read that or not, but that's a list of the projects that are included, which includes uh, bats, flying squirrels, salamanders, things like that that we wouldn't normally spend uh, hunting and fishing license money on. Um, we do have a little bit of staff time involved in this, um, some for a coordination of, of this grant and the uh, contracts that will be included in it, and a little bit for a multi-state muscle management project. Um, the uh, staff time for us, as you know, uh, all of our agency staff has to already be in the budget, so we are not expanding any for that. We are expanding by the amount of the federal grant, which is $264,149. Barry, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Griggs, I make motion that uh, we approve a, a proposed budget expansion for the Endangered Species Act, Section 6, in the amount of $264,149. Okay, have a motion now. Second. Any discussion on the commission? Question. All right. Well, how much of this is state license dollars, do you say, or is it is it all salaries that already exist? There will be a total of four thousand seven hundred thirty nine dollars of state money. But it's salaries basically that you're categorizing Correct. on it. We're we're paying these people anyway, you just Correct. Okay. This actually we'll be using uh, federal money to reimburse part of their salary. Any more questions or discussion on the commission? Anybody from the audience? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Budget Expansion Endangered Species Act, Section 6, $264,149. Passes. Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee recognizes John Gregory, uh, Manager for Region 4. Uh, regarding Greene County Education and Shooting Range Center. I know this is near and dear to this commission's heart. John, it's all yours. Thank you, Chairman Cannon. I, I did want just a little, a short history. Uh, I've talked to many of the commissioners. Uh, I'm sure y'all have talked among yourself about this project. Uh, back in February, the city and county uh, in, in Greenville and the, the county of Greene County came together, They this property's basically split by the, the city property line 
and agreed to pursue a grant to expand and, and improve an existing uh, shooting range that they have there uh, near the city. And uh, I, I received the package back in uh, April, late April, and since then we have uh, gone through uh, creating the contract for this uh, range facility and the federal funds that would be needed to do that. And that has now been signed by the, uh, actually the outgoing mayor. He, he didn't run for re-election, uh, but I've talked to the new mayor and he is very supportive of it and uh, is working with uh, a lot of new commissioner members to make sure they're up to speed on this project. And uh, the range now uh, is mainly used for uh, law enforcement activities, but the plan is uh, to build a hunter education uh, center. Uh, and basically the floor plan is, is they're kind of taking the Carroll County floor plan and uh, may modify it a little bit, but that's going to be the kind of the footprint for the building. And they, the plan is to expand their shooting, uh, shotgun shooting sports. I think they have one uh, trap skeet machine there now. They plan on uh, increasing it up to four. They, uh, the rifle range will have an expansion by at least two shooting stations. The current pistol range is going to be converted into a small bore rifle range. And then they're going to construct a new uh, pistol range. And that's the, that's the main uh, parts of the expansion. Uh, the public will be able to use it, which they haven't been able to in the past because it's just been an enforcement range. And of course, our hunter education classes and uh, other organizations will be able to use the uh, building uh, for their, uh, their classroom facility. And what we're asking today is uh, an expansion of the budget uh, it's all federal money. The, uh, the city, uh, through in-kind service, and for the value of dedicating this property uh, to this use and the public access to this property, uh, the value of that, uh, similar like it's a lease, will uh, we'll make all the, the non-federal match. So we're asking to expand the budget by $1.229. $300, $1,229,300. Total project is estimated about $1.66 John, really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know this project's been really important to you, and I'm willing to pass the torch on the motion to you. Okay. I will make the motion that uh, we uh, grant this budget expansion for Greene County Education and Shooting Range Center for one million two hundred twenty-nine thousand three hundred dollars. Can I get a second? Second. All right, I have a second. Is there any discussion from the commission or from the audience? Just one Mr. quick Rice? question. Uh, I understand the last hurdle was an environmental survey, and that report now of 105 pages has been completed with. Uh, basically, the summation was no further investigation needed. Is is that the last hurdle, John? Yeah, that's. We have submitted that to the, to the feds, federal government, Fish and Wildlife Service for their review and concurrence. I don't, I'm not sure that we've got a total blessing on that, Barry. I know it's been in major <coughs> discussions with them. Yes, earlier this week I had a <coughs> really a lengthy phone call, a conference call with um, five or six of the biologists down at the federal aid office in Atlanta. And by the time we got through, they had agreed that they could produce what they call a FONSI, which is a finding of no significant impact, and basically that means that's that's a green light. So I think we're okay. Any more discussion or questions from the commissioner and audience? All right, what we're voting on is the budget expansion for Green County Range. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion for a budget expansion, Green County Education Shooting Range Center for $1,229,300 passes. Mr. Gann. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our uh, committee's business. Normally we would have a financial report from Ken Tarkington. However, uh, the August books have not closed yet, and that presentation will be made at our next uh, commission meeting. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other business that needs to come before the commission? Anybody like to address the commission before we close? 
Director Carr, you have any announcements? I've, I goofed. <clears throat> I, I lied, folks. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, and I got the look <laughs> from Ed. Um, over the past couple of years, uh, a majority of this commission has been uh, involved in discussions regarding the real foot spillway as is, has been constructed, uh, at least in part, by the Tennessee Department of Transportation. Um, when the project was initiated, it was one of those that through no fault of TDOT or anyone else, uh, they were told to do it. Uh, transition of ownership, transition of operation and maintenance responsibilities, <coughs> excuse me, uh, were not addressed at that time. Um, it, it is replacing an existing spillway that we currently have, and Ed, keep me honest here, operation and maintenance responsibilities for, uh, that was in much need of replacement. Um, this, uh, the commissioner of TDOT and uh, and our commission have been charged to try to work out uh, how this transition and, and exactly what the transition is, uh, how and when that takes place. There's a meeting scheduled for October the 6th with the governor's chief of staff uh, to get everyone to rally around the table and figure out who's going to do what when. Um, Ed has been in meetings with uh, Commissioner Schroer. It seemed appropriate that uh, for this particular meeting, and given that the uh, Commissioner Shore has been asking where's the commission on this, that the commission at least be represented at this meeting on October the 6th. And so uh, I would request consensus that uh, either myself or Commissioner Griggs or another appointee, depending on who Chairman Griggs selects, but the bottom line is I believe it would be most appropriate for this commission to be represented not to take a firm position, but to be able to report back to the commission and make recommendation for actions that we may need to take. Director Carter, I've probably left out some details, but is there anything else you'd like to add? No, so that's pretty well, pretty good summary. The only thing I would just add that it, depending on how things close out, it could have some significant financial obligations to somebody, some branch of the state of Tennessee, so I think this meeting is pretty important and I appreciate the commission supporting as we go forward to try to figure out where we are. you have anything else? Yes, sir, if I could. Yes, sir. When, when I was talking earlier about the Shikar Safari Award, uh, I, I, I learned something. I thought I always, throughout my entire life, which has gotten to be pretty long lately, uh, the, and I'm proud of that, but in any case, the, the Shikar Safari Award is completely separate than Safari Club International. I always thought they were connected for, for my entire career. I guess I've learned something every day, and today that's a big one. So I, I erred when I said earlier that the that part of the Tennessee Valley chapter of Safari Club International, they were operating completely independently of the Shikar Safari Group, which, which is totally so that all the money that they brought forward was through Safari Club International, their local chapter but it had nothing to do with Shikar Safari Award. And I sh we should have mentioned earlier, too, that with the donations they gave today since we've in inception of the ELK program, that's about $75,000 that that club has brought forward in support of the ELK program. That's certainly worthy of recognition. <clears throat> and on the money-wise, Tim Churchill, he gave you this report a minute ago, and he kind of went over it pretty quickly, but just wanted to make note that he, he walked in my office early and he said, I guess I've earned my paycheck for this week. But anyway, between the two grants, the a million dollars in, into the agency from the, the NACA grant, the North American uh, Wetlands Conservation Act, and then also the $800,000 that came in from NIFWIF and from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. That's about a million eight hundred thousand dollars that's come in this week through, through those two grants, and I, I just didn't want that to go over so lightly. That's a pretty significant chunk of money. That's all I have. Thank you very much. And I didn't mean to give you the look. I was just there trying to think, <laughs> did I say that or not? So anyway, thank you. No, I thought I was looking at Angie there for a minute. You know, I had that look. So that's the <laughs> One of the duties that the chairman has, he gets to pick uh, where the meetings are and, and the times, the times and locations. And uh, the last thing I have, and we're by statute, we have to meet in each grand division at least once a year. 
we've already fulfilled our West Tennessee and went to Jackson last month. But it's great pride, that, and I know a lot of people question where we're going next month, but uh, we're going to Greene County to Greenville. It's fitting after we voted in this range today. And we've got a lot of friends up there, especially uh, Representative Hawk is a good friend of this agency. And uh, I will mention I have a first cousin that's a wildlife officer up there as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And I need you all to note, too, now that month we will be meeting on a Wednesday, Thursday. And I think it's October 29th and 30th. So that's our next meeting. And if there's nothing else, we stand adjourned.